welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today we have James Wilson with us. Welcome James. Thanks Natasha. We are still seeing ups and downs in the market. What has been impacting investments during the third quarter of 2023? Yeah, that's right. Global markets experienced yet another volatile quarter with both equities and fixed income declining, driven mostly by expectations around interest rates. So the view there has shifted from focusing on the fact that we are near the end of the monetary tightening cycle and now focusing on higher for longer interest rates. And this is what markets have been reacting to starting to discount near-term rate cuts by central banks as core inflation remains relatively sticky, as well as oil prices rising sharply over the quarter, likely to affect inflation expectations. The impact of higher interest rates was widely felt across the markets, from equities to property and also bonds, but very good for cash returns of course. The other key theme for the quarter has been the divergence in economic growth between the major regions, with the US continuing to show economic resilience, while momentum in Europe is fading and an evidence of an economic slowdown in China is mounting. Domestically, GDP rose by 0.9% in the second quarter, which was stronger than the market expectation of 0.4%. Also, Q1 GDP was revised up to flat from negative 0.1%, which erased a technical recession. So the upside surprise to Q2 GDP reflected a strong rebound from weather disruptions in the prior quarter and better than expected net exports as higher volumes more than offset weaker prices, particularly for dairy. However, the economic outlook remains subdued with higher interest rates and consumer spending expected to decline further, and of course the recent election in New Zealand. We are hearing a lot about the slowdown in the Chinese economy. What impact is that having on the local and global financial markets? Yeah, look, China gets a lot of airtime in the financial news. It is a country which historically has had one of the highest GDP growth rates worldwide and has subsequently faced mounting growth headwinds involving the financial woes of Evergrande, a Chinese property developer, the Chinese government regulatory crackdowns on the technology sector, and of course their strict stance on zero COVID and lockdown measures. In fact, the World Bank has recently downgraded its 2024 forecasts for the China economy. And this has a material impact on the Asia region especially, where headlines show it has the worst economic outlook in half a century. So China is a very important player on the global stage. And this year China has made global markets rattle. And if global markets rattle, then local markets tend to feel it too. So the weakness in China has stemmed from a couple of places. As China reopened its economy this year after strict pandemic requirements, there was a lot of positive rhetoric but the actual COVID reopening story has been quite underwhelming. Chinese retail sales are below pre-pandemic levels and household savings are very high, which led to weak macroeconomic data. Secondly, from further weakness seen in the property sector. Now this is important because Chinese economic growth is heavily reliant on its property sector, which accounts for roughly a quarter of its total GDP. The sector has been under intense scrutiny lately by the government, with regulatory limits on excessive borrowing, leaving many developers out of business, including Evergrande, which was recently pushed into default. But the silver lining is we're seeing some action. The Chinese government has taken material steps to ease monetary policy in an attempt to support growth and equity markets. There are signs that these have started to work. There was even record net inflows into China-focused equity exchange-traded funds over August. Now from a local economy perspective, we are quite reliant on China and we have been for some time. Slowing Chinese growth is having an impact on the New Zealand economy, which is already under quite a lot of pressure. This can be seen via weak Chinese demand for New Zealand dairy, which has driven down global dairy prices, so that's not good for our exports, as well as sheep and forestry being under pressure. And to give that some context, New Zealand exports around 60% of its logs to China. So with these industries being under pressure, I'm sure local businesses, especially in the regions, have started to feel the impact. Thanks James. As we head towards the end of 2023, what market trends can we anticipate for the remainder of the year and into the new year? Yeah, look, as we navigate the later end of 2023, the outlook remains inherently uncertain, but we remain cognizant of several key risks facing the global economy and financial markets. The majority of developed market central banks have opted to keep rates on hold and remain data dependent. A key question is whether central banks will look through the volatility in the upcoming inflation and labour market data, which may show signs of re-acceleration. 
And then what this means for those mega cap technology companies, the likes of Meta, Nvidia and Apple which have dominated global equity market returns this year, yet tend to face headwinds as interest rate expectations rise, so this will definitely be something to watch. It's also fair to say that headline inflation is expected to remain volatile, driven by recent increases in energy prices and a potential rise in food prices from reduced exports from Russia and Ukraine, or a poor harvest in Asia from El Nino. Also, the US government has recently averted a shutdown with government funding extended for 45 days. While a shutdown is expected to have a minimal effect on the broader economy, it does underscore weakness in US government strength and could result in a potential downgrade by Moody's, the only agency assigning a AAA rating to the US. The China economic growth story is of course another risk to look for as they continue to cut their rates to stimulate the economy. So we'll be watching to see how effective this is with regard to other headwinds such as slowing demand in the real estate sector and a recent liquidity crisis in Country Garden, which is China's biggest property developer, which could reduce confidence uh, further in the sector. In New Zealand, we don't expect major change in the economic outlook following the recent election, with both parties broadly in agreement of fiscal macroeconomic policy. If we continue to see resilient economic growth, persistent inflation, rising house prices and a strong labour market, we will be taking note. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Investment Insights.